every disease that I uh, saw in my office over a period of, say, 10 years had a dominant parasite involved. Who is Dr. Holda Clark? She's a controversial alternative practitioner who wrote the widely selling book, The Cure for All Diseases, and who claims all disease is caused by parasites. She claims to have a PhD in physiology from the University of Minnesota, but actually received a degree with a major in zoology and a minor in botany for her thesis entitled, A Study of the Ion Balance of Crayfish Muscle, Evidence for Two Compartments of Cellular Potassium. She has a naturopathic degree from the unaccredited Clayton College of Natural Health, and she is the recipient of a summary judgment by the Federal Trade Commission, preventing her from making unsubstantiated claims regarding her medical devices. Remember, I was testing everybody for a set of parasites, about 70. I list all the parasites in the book, which ones I was testing for. And to my surprise, if you had diabetes, it would be urethrema, the pancreatic fluke. Pancreatic fluke. Diabetes is a disease of the pancreas. And that is precisely where the relationship ends. Urethrema pancreaticum is a parasite of the pancreatic ducts of herbivorous mammals, like camels, monkeys, cows, etc. Its habitat ranges across Asia and South America, and parasitic infection is called urethromiasis. Urethromiasis is rare in humans, as the parasite is only spread by ingesting infected grasshoppers. It has absolutely nothing to do with any form of diabetes. Diabetics do not universally eat grasshoppers. So we have a relationship with two parasites and cancer, Clostridium bacteria yes. and the Fasciolopsis parasite, which you call the fluke. Okay, bear with me as we start with the Clostridium genus of bacteria. Clostridium is a well-studied genus of bacteria because Clostridia are found in soil, sewage, marine sediment, decaying animal and plant material, as well as the intestinal tracts of humans and other animals. They are ubiquitous and find their way into wounds and food. Their toxins are well characterized and cause a host of human diseases. Let's look at some members of the Clostridium genus and see if they cause cancer. Clostridium botulinum. C. botulinum's nerve toxin causes botulism, a paralytic illness. It's a relatively rare disease with only about 110 reported cases each year in the United States. Foodborne transmission of botulism is often from improperly canned food, while wound infection is from improper care of opened wounds. Botulism is a serious disease that may lead to death through respiratory failure, but it is not cancer. Next is Clostridium tetani. C. tetani's nerve toxin causes tetanus, another paralytic illness. It's a formerly common and serious disease. It's now preventable by regular vaccination. Transmission of tetanus is usually through a wound, often a deep puncture wound, but the disease itself is not contagious. The characteristic body posture shown to the left and lockjaw are common features of the disease progression. But once again, it is not cancer. Okay, I'll summarize the remaining members of the Clostridium genus. Clostridium difficile, known to health workers as C. diff, may cause diarrhea or colitis after normal intestinal flora is altered, such as through antibiotics. Clostridium perfringens has been found in every soil sample ever tested, with the exception of the Sahara Desert, as well as being a part of the normal human intestinal flora. Rare strains of C. perfringens may cause food poisoning. Other Clostridia are much rarer, and their role in human diseases is limited but they are well studied and the effect of their toxins is well known. Most importantly, the effect is not cancer. All right, let's move on to the Fasciolopsis busci. Fasciolopsis is a trematode that can spend part of its rather complex life cycle shown above infecting the human intestinal tract. Lucky for most of us, the geographical distribution of Fasciolopsis is limited to Asia and the Indian subcontinent, so infection in the West is rare. Of course, if you were infected, you would have a well-documented disease called fasciolopsiasis, and not cancer. The fasciolopsis larval parasite belongs to the malignant development. The clostridium belongs to the premalignant or tumor growth part of the whole process. And now that we have all heard the truth about clostridium and fasciolopsis, together we can recognize this statement for the complete and utter bullshit that it really is. We now have all the people watching this squirming at home because they all think now, okay, I understand, I have parasites in my body. And we all do, according yes, to your of research. Course we do. So according to your research, you've found that all humans have this, and as long as we're healthy, we're okay with it because the body can handle it. My next question to you is, how do we rid ourselves of these tenacious bacteria, parasites, 
and virus. Do you have an answer to that? The, the, the answer uh, that I came up with already in the first uh, books was the hoe of the black walnut tree, but the hoe has to be green. There is something in the green hull that kills everything I ever tested for. Some statements should always make your bullshit meter hit the maximum reading. These are statements like, there is one cause for diverse diseases, like the statement, cancer is caused by a fluke in a bacteria, or there's one cure for diverse diseases, such as, you should take black walnut to get rid of all parasites, or the cure always works, i.e., it kills everything. No scientific support exists for Dr. Holda Clark's claims regarding black walnut holes. Very early evidence exists suggesting one chemical compound in the walnut, not the hole, called juglone, may reduce cancer risk, but human studies have not yet been completed. The claims regarding this product far, far, far exceed the evidence. How do we get them? That has been the subject of my research and what's in the advanced cancer book, of course. We eat uh, Clostridium bacteria because they're everywhere in dirt. Is she saying she eats dirt? But we don't get sick from eating Clostridium in dirt. Well, I guess I don't get sick because I don't eat dirt. We, uh, we eat a common little parasite in dirt called rabbit fluke. It has a scientific name, too. This is a rabbit. Rabbits are what the rabbit fluke, Hastelesia tricolor, infects. Rabbits are not humans. And a zoologist should really know this. Uh, and that rabbit fluke brings in Clostridium, sort of like the Trojan horse brought in soldiers. They are within. So after eating rabbit fluke with nearly all the food that you think is perfectly safe. Carrots? Root vegetables. Raw carrots, yes. Even cooked carrots, yes. Because uh, this parasite... The, the rabbit fluke does not get killed by boiling temperatures. This is absolute nonsense, as cooking foods is the surest way to kill flukes. However, in researching hypothermophiles, the few archaea and bacteria who can survive temperatures exceeding 100 degrees Celsius, I discovered what is now my new favorite animal. So you'll have to forgive my digression, as I'd rather tell you about it than refute Holda Clark's nonsense. You are looking at a picture of a tardigrade, also known as a water bear, which might just be the hardiest animal on this planet. Steve Irwin aside. As well as being found in hot springs, atop the Himalayas, and under layers of solid ice, the tardigrade also makes its home in milder climates, like ponds and meadows. Now get this, it can survive dehydration for up to a decade. Temperature extremes from negative 272 degrees Celsius, that's one degree above absolute zero, up to 151 degrees Celsius. It can also withstand 570,000 rads of radiation, 2,000 rads being deadly to humans for a comparison, as well as withstanding pressure extremes ranging from the vacuum of space to 6,000 times the atmospheric pressure of Earth. It can also withstand a variety of chemical assaults. And as the next clip shows, they're pretty darn cute, too. I mean, look at that little guy. He's just adorable. Look at his little paws. Oh, see? I wish I could have one of these as a pet. I know I wouldn't be able to kill it. Okay, back to Holda Clark, one of my least favorite animals. We test uh, all the food for our patients for three molds, zearalanone, patulin, and aflatoxin. First off, these aren't even molds. They're mycotoxins made by molds, which is a fact Holda Clark doesn't seem to understand. All right, bear with me again as we go through each mycotoxin in turn. Zearalanone. 